Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm a designer working in the UK and I make videos for fun on tech, productivity and finance. Today I wanted to do a quick video review for you guys on the iPad keyboard folio. I'm going to tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it and ultimately whether you should buy it versus some of the other keyboard options on the market out there for the iPad. So let's get into it. So let's start with the design. I got this keyboard about a year ago and I absolutely love this thing. The design is super simple and the keyboard for the 12.9 inch iPad, which is the one I'm using, is almost comparable to full size keyboards. The cover just magnetically attaches to the iPad really easily and it connects via the usual three pin connector. You can then simply close up the keyboard and it acts like a protective cover when you're carrying the iPad around. And then when you want to get typing, you just open it up and get going. The design of the keys themselves is really nicely done. Unlike other keyboards, the keys are actually covered all around by a fabric coating, which means you don't need to be worried about dust or dirt getting in between the keys. This is a really thoughtful touch from Apple and becomes pretty essential on something as portable as an iPad, which is just going to be going in and out of your bag very regularly. In terms of what I like about this keyboard, we have to cover the typing experience first. This is quite possibly my all round favourite typing experience because of how friendly the keyboard feels when you're using it. My main keyboard is the 2020 16 inch MacBook Pro and don't get me wrong, that experience is vastly superior to this. So if you're settling in for some serious work, that's definitely the way to go. But it's not as personal as the iPad Folio keyboard. If you're just nipping out to a coffee shop or wanting to journal early in the morning with a coffee, it's really nice to have a different typing experience. The other thing I like about this keyboard is that it's super thin and not too heavy or intrusive. I easily carry this around in my backpack with my MacBook Pro and if you haven't seen what's in my bag video yet then definitely go and have a look at that. In terms of things I don't like about the keyboard, there's really not a lot here. It would be great if there was another flatter angle setting but to be honest you can always just remove the iPad when you want to use it for drawing or note taking which is what I do. And I guess in a new iteration if Apple could add backlit keyboards whilst also keeping the same weight and form factor, then that would be really the ultimate. One of the questions I seem to get a lot is what about alternative keyboards for the iPad Pro? Well, we're actually pretty blessed to be living in an age where there's a lot of iPad Pro keyboard options out there, which are all really, really good. Having said that, there's only really two serious contenders in my mind to the keyboard folio. One is the Slim Folio Pro from Logitech, which retails for about 100 US dollars. I tried this keyboard and whilst the typing experience is really good and the keys lighting up is a nice touch, ultimately I found the design just too bulky and too intrusive. As a designer you notice things like that. The second and probably more obvious choice is Apple's new Magic Keyboard. So I've tried the Magic Keyboard and whilst the typing experience is second to none, there are three fundamental flaws with it. Firstly is its weight. You've probably seen videos of people weighing the keyboard in the past but it is seriously heavy. It's so heavy that when you put the iPad Pro on it, it actually ends up being heavier than the MacBook Air. The reason the keyboard is so heavy is so that the weight distribution can handle different angles on the screen. Even with this counterbalance consideration though, the Magic Keyboard's maximum angle is just not enough for me. I'm quite tall, and if you're anything like me and get back pain from slumping over a small screen, then I'd steer well clear of the Magic Keyboard. The Smart Keyboard Folio has a much better maximum angle and it's just way cheaper. Which brings me on to the next and final point. Finally, the price of the Magic Keyboard is over $300, which is just insane. That's a ridiculous amount of money to spend on a keyboard. I would say save your cash and stick with the Smart Keyboard Folio. So this brings us to our final question, which is should you buy it? In summary, I definitely recommend the Smart Keyboard Folio if you already have an iPad Pro. For the price, it's definitely the best option out there and in my opinion, you're going to get a lot of value from using it. Don't buy it though if you're expecting a perfect laptop typing experience because that's a whole different category. If you want the best typing experience on a portable machine, then go and get yourself a MacBook Pro. So guys, that's it for this review video. Let me know what keyboards you're using in your iPads at the moment. I'd also love to hear whether you guys are enjoying these videos, so remember to drop me a like if you are, and let me know in the comments below if there's any other videos you'd like me to do. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and remember to subscribe for more.